Good morning and a warm welcome. Sage here from Kalkine TV reporting to you live from Sydney. And you're watching the Global Markets Roundup. Let's dive into some key highlights and happenings from yesterday, starting with the US market. And the dollar eased over concerns about slowing growth, but world stock markets scaled new heights on Wednesday, with investors looking beyond the weak economic data to focus on a likely continuation of massive central bank stimulus measures. MSCI's all-country world index climbed to its fourth intraday high in a row, while the Nasdaq Composite hit a fresh high. S&P 500 and Nasdaq Composite closed higher on Wednesday, the first day of September, boosted by gains in technology, real estate and utility stocks, while the Dow Jones declined amid the mixed queues. The S&P 500 was up 0.03% to 4,524.09 and the Dow Jones fell 0.14% to 35,312.53. The Nasdaq Composite rose 0.33% to 15,309.38 and the Small Cap Russell 2000 was up 0.58% to 2,287.06. Technology, real estate and utility stocks were the top movers on the S&P 500. Energy and basic material stocks were the laggards. Seven of the 11 index segments were in the green. Shares of PVH Corp, the parent company of Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger surged 14.93% after reporting its second quarter results. Its total revenue rose 46% year over year to reach 2.31 billion US dollars in the quarter. The company lifted the full year revenue outlook after a robust quarterly performance. It raised the EPS projection on a GAAP basis to $8.80 US per share from the previous $6.60 US per share. Campbell Soup Company's stock rose 1.86% despite a muted profit outlook for financial year 22 due to rising costs of raw materials and declining demand. Its net sales fell 11% year over year to 1.8 billion US dollars in the fourth quarter of financial year 21. Let's move on now to the futures and commodities market. Gold futures were down 0.10% to reach 1816 US dollars 35 cents per ounce. Silver increased by 0.82% to 24 US dollars 0.203 cents per ounce, while copper fell 2.16% to 4 US dollars 0.2805 cents. The Brent oil futures decreased by 0.47% to 71 US dollars 29 cents per barrel and WTI crude was down 0.39 percent to 68 US dollars and 23 cents. Let's move on now to the bond markets and the 30-year Treasury bond yields were down 0.60 percent to 1.915 while the 10-year bond yields fell 0.38 percent to 1.297. The US dollar futures index decreased by 0.14 percent to US 92 dollars 0.505 cents. And now we've reached the time for a small break, but stay tuned as I'll be back with the Asia and Australia market updates. Hi, I'm Sage, and get ready to take the crypto ride with me on Kalkine TV. Watch the crypto buzz every Tuesday and join the excitement at Kalkine TV from Bitcoins to NFTs to Dogecoin and DeFi. We have updates about everything around these digital currencies. Understand the investing rationale and the risks involved in the space with me, Sage, on Crypto Buzz. Keep watching Kalkine TV. Welcome back, Sage here. You're watching the Global Markets Roundup show by Kalkine TV. European stocks closed higher on Wednesday as fresh signs of weakness in the Asian economies were offset by hopes for more stimulus, while investors shook off concerns about the rising inflation. And after seven straight months of gains, the pan of European stock 600 rose 0.5% to end at 473.12 points and was within striking distance of its record high of 476.16. And meanwhile, the London markets traded in the green after the release of the encouraging UK manufacturing data. According to the latest figures from the IHS market, CIPS, the manufacturing PMI had shown a reading of 60.3 for August 2021, while it was 60.4 for the prior month. With reference to the latest figures from nationwide, the UK house prices had shown a month-on-month -month increase of around 2.1% during August 2021 when compared with the prior month. 
888 Holdings shares surged by about 4.07% after the company reported a record interim profit and subsequently raised the full year guidance. And moreover, the company's business got benefited from the recently concluded Euro 2020. The government bond deals across the euro area touched their highest levels in around six weeks on Wednesday, pushed up by the hawkish rhetoric from the policymakers that stoked unease over the future pace of the European Central Bank's bond purchases. And Germany's 10-year yield touched its highest levels in just over six weeks at negative 0.354%. It was last up 1.4 basis points at negative 0.366%. Moving along, and the Japanese shares jumped on Wednesday with the Nikkei hitting a one-and-a-half-month high as investors bet Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga's manoeuvring might help restore political stability. And the Nikkei average gained 1.29% to 28,451.02, its highest close since July 14th, having broken above the key resistance levels such as the 200-day average at 28,281. And the broader topics rose 1.03% to a five-month closing high of 1,980.79. Chinese shares rose on Wednesday after the factory activity data raised hopes of an easing in policy with consumer staples, real estate, financials and infrastructure sectors leading the gains. The blue chip CSI 300 index rose 1.3% to end at 4,869.46, while the Shanghai Composite Index gained 0.7% to 3,567.10. South Korean shares ended higher on Wednesday on a tech boost and strong exports data, though gains were capped on concerns over the rising coronavirus cases and caution ahead of the U.S. jobs data later this week. The Kospi closed up 7.75 points or 0.24% at 3,207.02, extending gains to the fourth session after a sharp 1.75% gain on Tuesday. Moving on now, and the Australian shares are expected to fall again on Thursday despite global markets closing at record highs overnight as investors looked beyond the weak economic data. The markets were upbeat despite Asia's factory activity remaining weak last month and US private employers hiring far fewer workers than expected in August due to the rise in coronavirus cases. The HKEX Biotech Summit will start today in Hong Kong, which puts the biopharma stocks in focus. And the Melbourne biotech firm Mesoblast saw its shares plunge 15.9% on Tuesday. The company has faced some regulatory resistance from the U.S. authorities. And the company who produces stem cell treatments faced double jeopardy as the U.S. regulators informed further tests of its COVID-19 test would need to be conducted before emergency approval was granted. Also on the back of the company's quarterly announcements revealed a loss of US $98.8 million or Australian $134.6 million. The company did experience hurdles also last October and regulators are not convinced their phase three trial data proved sufficient as results relating to deaths in patients under 65 were not at an acceptable level. Mesoblast needs its mainstream product Remis Stem Cell L to gain approval as it offers a dual utility in the treatment of severe respiratory constriction symptomatic of COVID-19. And Mesoblast also advised its drug can ease acute immune graft versus host ailments in minors. Having US $136 million cash on hand, the full year report shows Mesoblast is still encumbered by its debt obligations, where it drew down 50 million US dollars from its total of 75 million US dollars borrowed from Hercules after amendments to the facility were made to extend the loan facility to January 2022. Many market participants expect central bank stimulus measures to continue as well and the ASX 200 fell 0.1% to 7,527.1 points on Wednesday. The domestic miners may fall on weak iron ore prices while the tech stocks are likely to gain tracking cues from NASDAQ. And the BHP shares will be under pressure during the trade on Thursday due to the shares trading ex-dividend for the fully franked final dividend. Other shares going ex-dividend include CSL InvoCare, NIB Holdings, Woolworths as well. 
Now, meanwhile, the oil price has inched lower after OPEC stuck to its current plan of gradual hikes in output, and the Brent crude fell to US $71.59 a barrel, while the WTI crude rose to $68.59 US a barrel. Energy stocks such as Woodside Petroleum, Santos Limited, could trade lower on Thursday. Gold traded within a narrow range on Wednesday followed, following the release of the key US economic data. And the spot gold was down 0.1% at 1812 US dollars 55 cents per ounce. The US gold futures ended 0.1% lower at 1816 US dollars an ounce. And the ASX listed gold stocks such as Northern Star Resources and Newcrest Mining could trade lower on Thursday. Chinese iron ore futures fell over 8% on Wednesday, pulled down by a sluggish spot market. And the benchmark iron ore futures on the Dalian Commodity Exchange for January delivery closed 7.8% lower at 765 yuan. And thanks for joining us on that report, but that's all for now. Keep watching Kalkine TV for more of the market updates. And this is Sage reporting for Kalkine.